and welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I'm showing you my nanny's sewing box. So you'll know if you saw my latest video that this is the second attempt at filming this video. Um, I was very kindly gifted by my family the sewing box of my late nanny, who uh, my grandmother who passed away a few years ago. And um, yeah, she, I've got her sewing box and I haven't actually even looked through it all properly. And lots of you commented on my previous video saying that you would enjoy to see what's inside my nanny's sewing box. And I've also got a stack of um, these lovely old Quality Street tins. Um, sorry, I'm a bit far away to show you this. But they're these beautiful old Quality Street tins. They seem to be largely full of buttons. Um, but I've got those as well to rummage through. So I thought I'd kind of film myself, I'll probably turn most of this into a time lapse and maybe like show you at the end like the main treasures that I've found. But as you can see, the sewing box is one of these lovely wooden sewing boxes that expands. Now, the legs are a little bit sticking out in funny directions. I definitely need to fix those or get them pointing in the right direction but basically it's one of these ones where you can lift both of the lids open but then the whole section's actually concertina out like so. So I'm going to get stuck in and see what treasures I can find in here that might be of interest to you. Okay, so I've finished going through my nanny's sewing box and I've emptied pretty much everything out of it <laughs> and there are some real gems so I think I'm gonna have to like put some clips and um, images in because I think it's a bit hard for me to try and film things while I'm talking about them but in the top two tiers of this um, sewing box are sewing threads and there are some beautiful beautiful colours so for example there's um, you might not be able to see very well from here, but there's like a beautiful emerald green, there's a beautiful like mustard gold yellow, um, there's quite a few greens, and green is really like a colour that I like to wear a lot, so I've definitely got a whole load of beautiful threads that I can add to my stash and use. Um, and then there's just so many other like really interesting bits and bobs, so I'll try and just stick to the most interesting ones. There are three pairs of scissors here that I'm really excited about because I think I will be able to use these probably as an upgrade from the scissors that I already own. I don't own any super fancy, super nice quality scissors, I just have some fairly, you know, standard dressmaking scissors that you'd buy from anywhere that sells dressmaking things. But you know, they've got plastic handles, they're nothing particularly lovely and these I mean I don't know anything about the brand but I've got sorry I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see but I've got this set of three pairs of scissors and they seem to all be oh actually no they're not all the same brand one is made by Richards of Sheffield England and the other two are Radiant Rustless Golden Age so one is like sort of a standard pair of dressmaking shears Another is um, like a smaller pair of scissors and then the third pair is pinking shears and I imagine I'll probably need to find um, a specialist who could sharpen them for me because they probably need it, they feel like they probably need it. But those I'll definitely be able to adopt into my everyday sewing. Then I've also found in here a tracing wheel and it's still in the packet which is so my nanny. Um, <laughs> just to keep everything pristine like in its original packaging is just so what she would do and I've never actually used a tracing wheel but I've forever been meaning to get into tracing wheels because my least favourite part of the sewing process is transferring the pattern markings onto the fabric I just really don't enjoy that part but I think that if I get on board with you know a tracing wheel and carbon paper or whatever it is that you need I think it could be good so I'm pleased with that What's next? Oh yeah, okay, so this is lovely. This is a little paper packet of pins, and it's just so sweet. It's um, marvellous plated pins, solid heads, fine points, made in England. The brand is Porcupine, and it's just so lovely because you, it's like a little paper packet, and you, 
It like unrolls to reveal several layers of pins on the inside like that. So you then like roll it up and then you've got like the branding on the front and it's just such a sweet little packet that then folds up into a neat little package. Really like that. There's also several sets of pins. I've got a little wheel of 30 assorted needle, uh, sorry, not pins, these are needles. And I actually don't have that many hand needles, so that will be useful. Got various different bits of buttons and things. These, are, I assume, are a thing of their time. Um, my nanny had several packets of these, three packets, so presumably it was something she used quite a lot. Um, this is mercerized cotton mending thread, and it's for stockings and tights. Doesn't that just show a change in the times? Because unfortunately, I feel like these days, if we get a hole in our tights, they probably go, you know, in the fabric recycling or in the bin. Um, but equally, you know, people don't mend things as much anymore, which is such a shame and something that we sh should try and change. But also, the colours of these are really dark, so it also shows that back in sort of my nanny's day, people wore the thick, you know, thick, hard duty tights, not the wispy little five denier like skin colour tights that people would wear today. So that was a sweet little find. There's all sorts of bits of like some strips of lace, some elasticated lace, various bits of binding, several, she's got three packets of white bias binding so that was clearly something that she either used a lot or thought she would use a lot. Um, there's a little pot here that's got some little metal thimbles. I don't really know anything about metal thimbles. I don't, I don't know if they would have any like value, but they're just so much nicer than like here, there's also a plastic thimble and the metal ones are just so lovely. Um, so if I get heavily into hand sewing, I'll be using a nice decorative metal thimble. Something that I found quite intriguing were these packets. She's got three packets in her sewing kit of trouser pockets. Um, like ready-made trouser pockets, like they're already cut to the right shape and they are um, overlocked on one edge, on the curved edge it looks like. And I just thought, um, how funny that, like these days it's, well to me as a home sewer in 2020, I'm used to like my, my sewing patterns coming with a pocket piece and just cutting it out of the same fabric or, you know, an alternative fabric, but clearly at one point it was a thing that you, maybe you still, I'm sure you probably still can, but clearly my nanny liked to buy trouser pockets instead of making them. And these are, um, one of these is nylon, the other one says it's polycotton, made in England. Like, so much of this stuff says on it, made in England, and I think that's, it's a bit sad that these days it's just not the case that we don't really have industry like that in this country anymore, certainly not to the same extent. This I found, I, I'll put an image in because you're not going to see. To the untrained eye, it looks like a white colouring pencil with a brush on the end, and it says pick a bee on it. I don't know what that means, but I wonder if this is a pen, like a Taylor's chalk pencil, like not Taylor's chalk necessarily, but I wonder if it's got that you would draw on your fabric and then maybe have the brush to brush it off again. Not sure if anybody knows what this is for, let me know. A bit of nostalgia, so many of these things were bought from Woolworth, um, which is a company that unfortunately went bust quite a long time ago now, but when I was a child, we went to Woolworths every Saturday and bought like sweets and stuff. And this um, elastic here is was eight pence whenever my nanny bought it from Woolworth. <laughs> Zips. Apparently my nanny had quite a large metal zip collection and it, they're almost all metal except one or two plastic ones. And this is actually really going to come in handy. I probably will end up giving a lot of them away, but because I'm not really, I've never really used metal zips, but I really want to make, oh, I'm going to have to put it in the description below because I can't remember what the pattern is, but there's a pattern for a bum bag. I call it a bum bag. I don't know what else you'd call it. Like a like a little bag on a strap that goes around your waist, basically. You know what I mean? A bum bag. And I found a pattern and it needs two metal zips. And I was looking online and I couldn't find the right lengths that I needed, but I've got so many here, surely 
I can find a combination of the two zips that I need to make this pattern. So that will be really good. I found a pattern in my nanny's sewing box and it's very sweet. It's um, for a one to two year old, a um, little like romper boiler suit. And oh, it's just so sweet. It's really old, really delicate. So I haven't actually got out the packet yet, but that was very sweet. She has an awful lot of this self-adhesive contact tape. There's one in a packet here, 85 pence from Woolworth. Um, and she's got quite a lot of it in her sewing kit. I don't really know what it is. There's some that's like plasticky and there's some that's like woven. Anybody know what this is or what you would use it for? Let me know. A particularly precious thing I think is that this is clearly my nanny's um, hand needle case and I presume it probably was made for her by one of her kids. My, this is my dad's mother and my dad is one of four boys so she had four sons but it's like very sweet. It's a little um, orange needle case but it's got a little Christmas tree on the front and it's a little bit of a wonky looking Christmas tree so I presume it would have been more professional if she'd have made it for herself. Um, and I just think that's really sweet and clearly got like a lot of memories behind it. And she's got pages and, you know, you've got the fabric pages of pins. Um, and I actually have one of these that my other nanny on, on my mum's side of the family made for me. And I don't know, to me, it, it's just like, don't most sewers have one of these, like a little homemade needle case? If you don't have one, maybe, maybe get on it, join in with my family's little tradition to have yourself a homemade little needle case really sweet. I think, oh, this. What on earth is this? Does anybody know? It says on it, Singer Craft Guide. Singer Sewing Machines. Blah, 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 blah. And it's got a contraption on the end, but I can't, I don't know if it's like a bit rusty. I can't seem to make it move. Oh, I made it move. Don't know. If any of you know what this is, let me know. And I think the last thing I want to show you is this. Now, I don't really know if this is of any use or of any worth, um, but it's a plastic contraption. I don't know if there are any pieces missing. It looks like there might be. And it came free with Women's Weekly. And um, this is the packet. The packet is a, a bit torn and ripped, but if I piece it together, I can see that this was the free gift that came with Woman's Weekly, um, the magazine, and it's a 10 in one handicraft set. So presumably these bits of blue plastic, which I imagine, as I said, I think there are a few more bits that look like they might have gone missing. But it looked like you could use this, these tools as an, an inch rule, a centimeter rule, a button maker, a mitering angle, crochet hook, bodkin, cable needles, crochet hook gauge, patchwork template, bobble maker, etc, etc. And it's in this cute little packet and I just think that's so sweet and how times have changed that, I know you can obviously, there are obviously still um, specialist sewing magazines, but how nice that Women's Weekly, like a mainstream women's magazine back in the day, you would have got sewing paraphernalia. I know some people might think that it's maybe a good thing that you don't, it's not like that anymore because obviously women have been freed to a large extent and we are now able to, you know, for, to a certain extent we are able to free ourselves of sort of domestic slavery and we're not necessarily expected to be at home sewing all the time. But actually people like us who enjoy sewing as a hobby quite like the idea of, of it being mainstream enough for you to get a free sewing gift in a like a mainstream women's magazine it's it's equal it's a shame that so few people sew these days so yay for us keeping the hobby going and then lastly um i've got my button button um <laughs> tins and i was right the vast majority of them are buttons and there's i'm gonna have to go through them and sort of sort them out because what a treasure trove i don't think i'm ever going to need to buy a button again assuming there's enough that are the same but some of them already my nanny has sewn like on a little she's sewn them together on a little string so 
so that those buttons in a set are kept together and I think that's a really good idea. But yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed having a... Oh, one last thing. There's a handwritten note that I found in the sewing box. It's not overly like sentimental or anything because I think it's from a random... Well, not random. I think it's from my nanny's sewing machine, local sewing machine man or, or woman. Um, but it says, Dear Eric, Eric is my grandfather who sadly passed away when I was very young, so I don't really remember him. Um, but that's the name of my grandfather. So, dear Eric, I have put a new throat plate and new hinged pressure foot on the machine. Tell your wife to keep to a fine cotton as some of the materials now are a bit difficult to sew on these machines. And then it's got some advice on the bottom about different materials and what size needle my nanny should be using. I just think this is just a lovely little bit of history because clearly my nanny at this point was using probably an older model of machine and this note suggests that nowadays the fabrics are getting a bit more technical maybe and maybe you need like a newer fancier sewing machine to keep up with the more difficult fabrics and yeah just the sewing machine repair person giving my nanny advice on how to use her sewing machine I just think that's really lovely. So I think I've waffled on enough now showing you all these bits and bobs. Oh no, there's one last thing. Oh, I keep doing this. I think that's like, is that the third time? So this, I presume, again, I'll put a close up in so you can actually see it, but I presume this is like a cutting from a magazine or something, but it's just really on trend because it is directions for using elastic thread. And it gives you the instructions and tells you what to do. And then on the back, it gives you, you know, some, examples for what you can use it for and it's got directions for straight shearing, smocked shearing, waffle shearing, deundal shearing, um, sewing suggestions and it's got illustrations showing you how you can use shearing and you know um, elastic thread on furnishings and for fashion uses on children's clothes and um, underwear and I just think Again, it's lovely. I wish we got little pamphlets like this in, you know, magazines these days. Really sweet. And on trend, I can, I'm just so jealous of everybody's shirt, um, shirt, sheared? Sheared dresses. I think a lot of people are using the Elisa Lex, um, the By Hand London tutorial that Elisa Lex did for making a sheared dress. It's on the By Hand London. I'm not sure if it's on their blog, but it's definitely on their, I think their Instagram stories saved as a highlight. Um, I don't think I'm going to get around to making one this summer because by that time it will probably be autumn and I won't be interested in anymore, but maybe next summer. But I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's everyone's making these lovely sheer dresses. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed having a sneak peek at the treasures and sort of nostalgia of looking through my nanny's sewing bits. I'll be kind of collating all this together and incorporating it into my, um, my own like everyday sewing sewing use but any bits that I don't think I will get any use of I'll find a way to donate them or put them on free cycle or give them away on Instagram or something to make sure that somebody who would use some of this stuff will get hold of it and um, yeah let me know in the comments if you know what any of the unusual bits were and I'll see you next time bye